Hello my sewing bees, I'm Suki and in today's video I'm going to share with you how to make four projects in less than 10 minutes for Easter. Now in the description there's going to be all of the materials and supplies that you're going to need along with a link so that you can download the pattern pieces. Alright, let's get started. First up are the bunny stuffies. There's actually a bunny stuffy and then there's a bunny stuffy floppy. Now in order to make the floppy one, you're going to need a little bit wider of material. So for the floppy you're going to need two 5 by 9 inch or 13 by 23 centimeter and for the original bunny stuffy you're going to need two 4 inch by 9 inch or 10 by 23 centimeters. You'll notice my materials are wrong side facing each other and we're going to place the pattern pieces on top, centered, and pin, and cut. Now set up a zigzag on your machine about 3.5 millimeters wide by 1.5 millimeters long and stitch about a quarter of an inch away from the outside with the wrong sides together. You are going to want to leave an opening about 2 inches at the very base bottom part of the little stuffy. And back stitch at the beginning and the end. Now it's time to clip our threads and give our little bunnies a press. Here comes the fun part. We are going to stuff our little bunny stuffies. The thing I found that works the best is to take some of the fluffy stuffing and roll it into some tiny balls to get started. You are also going to want to have something to help push the stuffing in and I used the little purple thing but you could also use a chopstick or look around for something that you have. Just You don't want to use anything that's too sharp that could accidentally poke through. And I like to start in the ears and get those tiny little balls up inside the ears and just take your time. Once you're finished with the ears, go to the face and then fill up the body of your little bunny stuffy. Make sure it gets into the little feet areas and then use some wonder clips to hold it in place because now we're going to head back to the sewing machine. With the same zigzag stitch as before, you're going to just close that opening. Make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end. When you're finished stitching, go ahead and just clip your thread tails. Now when you're finished, grab yourself about 16 inches of twine or ribbon and tie it around the little bunny stuffy's neck and make a cute little bow. These are super fast and easy to make and you can make them in all kinds of different colors and materials. So I can't wait to see which materials and colors you're going to use to fill up your Easter basket this year. Then next up is the egg silverware holder. This is a really fast project and it's going to look lovely for Easter dinner. You will need two 6x8 pieces or 16 by 21 centimeters for the front and the back and you will need two 6x5 inches or 16 by 13 centimeters for the lower front. You will also need a piece of thin batting to coordinate with each size. Place the thin batting underneath one piece and then put right sides together. 
and do this for both the front and the lower front. Now get your pattern pieces pinned to the materials through all the layers and cut around. Set your sewing machine up for a regular straight stitch and sew a quarter of an inch along the top part of the lower front, back stitch at both ends. Now cut your thread tails and you're going to give this a couple of presses. One closed, that helps set the seam. The next you're gonna press open and the last you're gonna fold the seam around and press it flat. You're going to remove what is going to be the front eventually and you're going to place the lower front on top of the back and the batting. Pin all the layers together and then you're going to head to the sewing machine and do an eighth of an inch basting stitch all the way around the lower portion. Clip your thread tails and press the basting stitch. And now you're going to place the front right sides together over top of that lower front and the back. Pin all the way around. And we're going to be stitching this and need to leave an opening. I like to leave the opening towards the bottom and you're gonna need to leave at least two or three inches. Sometimes I'll put double pins on the opening area so that by the time I get to the sewing machine, I don't forget where to stop and start. You're gonna sew a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way around, back stitching at the beginning and the end, and just remember to remove your pins as you sew. It's always a good idea to never stitch over a straight pin. Now clip your thread tails once again, and you're gonna wanna grab a pair of pinking shears. These are the most amazing little invention, and they have little zigzag teeth that's gonna help making, turning the little egg right side out super easy, because we're cutting all the way around with these little zigzag edges. Give it a press one more time to help set the seam. And now it's time to turn your egg right side out. And I'm actually using the Easy Point and Turner, which is a clever invention that helps easily turn projects right side out. Then use a rounded ended point turner to help smooth out the curves. And you guessed it, we're gonna give it another press. Now tuck in the opening seam allowance and hold it secure with some wonder clips because the next thing we're gonna do is thread a four thread needle and we're gonna hand stitch that little opening closed. Now I want to let you know that no one's ever gonna see these stitches. They just need to secure the two opening pieces together. So don't worry about it looking beautiful because it will never be visible. Now tie a knot at the end of your hand stitching. And as a little bonus, to prepare yourself for your next hand stitching project, tie a second knot about a quarter of an inch away from the first knot and then cut the thread. And now your needle is ready for hand stitching once again. Now you're gonna turn your egg so that it's right sides completely out and smooth out that bottom curve and give it another press. And now your little egg silverware holder is completely finished and ready to receive the silverware.
Next up is the bunny bag. And this little project is so fast and easy to make, you're probably gonna be able to whip up at least three of them in less than 10 minutes. You will need two seven by 10 inch or 18 by 25 centimeters for the front and the back. With the two pieces wrong sides together, place the pattern piece directly over the top, pin in place, and you're going to be using pinking shears to cut around the outside. Now remove the pins and remove the pattern piece. Grab some wonder clips and you're gonna place those wonder clips from the inside of the bunny ear at the top all the way on the sides, the bottom, the other side, and on the ear. You're gonna be stitching all the way around everywhere except this little opening. Head to your sewing machine and set up a straight stitch and about an eighth of an inch away from the outside you're gonna backstitch to begin and go all the way to the point of the ear, all the way down the sides and all the way around, leaving that little opening at the center top. When you're finished stitching, go ahead and clip your threads. And give your bunny bag a quick press to help set the seam and relax the fibers. Now it's time to fill up your little bunny bag with goodies for Easter. You are going to need about 20 inches of twine so that you can wrap it around. And it really depends where you want to wrap it. You can wrap it low or high. Just make sure that at the top of it, it looks like bunny ears. And last but not least is the bunny applique runner. Now with this technique that you're going to learn, you could make placemats, a long table runner, a little table topper. It's entirely up to you. However, today's instructions will be for the bunny applique runner. You're going to need 13 by 31 inches or 33 by 79 centimeters of burlap. You will also need four six by nine inch or 15 by 23 centimeter pieces of material for the bunny appliques, along with four corresponding paperback fusible web pieces. Fuse the paperback fusible web pieces with the scratchy side to the wrong side of the bunny applique pieces and do that for all four pieces. There are two bunny appliques on each end of the runner. Decide which two you want for each side and place them right sides together. This way when you cut your pattern pieces, the bunnies will be facing one another. Now stack those on top of one another so that you are going to be cutting four pieces. Place the bunny applique on top of all of those pieces and pin in place through all the layers. Now grab those pinking shears one more time and you're going to cut just outside of the bunny applique pattern piece. Take your time because there are several layers here so just cut slow and smooth and if the four layers is too much for you then just reduce it down to one or two layers at a time. Once you're finished cutting, remove the straight pins, remove the pattern piece, and then separate all four of your little bunny appliques. Now remember, on the wrong side of those appliques, you're going to have that paperback fusible web. So just remove the paper part, which will just leave the fusible web, and do that for all four pieces. Mm -hmm. 
In order to prepare your burlap, it's pretty simple. We're just gonna work on one end at a time and you're gonna wanna place it on top of an ironing surface. Find the center of the width and about one inch above the bottom short end, you're going to place the bottom of the two bunnies. And they're going to be about a half inch in from the center. And give them a good press and follow the paperback fusible web manufacturer's instructions. Once you're finished pressing the one side, just repeat the same exact thing on the other side with the remaining two bunnies. Now roll it all up and head to your sewing machine and just with a regular straight stitch you're going to begin stitching at the lower end of one of the bunnies about an eighth of an inch toward the inside all the way around. Just sew, lower your presser foot, lower your needle, rotate and repeat until you have finished stitching around all four of the bunnies. When you're finished stitching all of your little bunnies, go ahead and clip your thread tails. Now set the sewing machine up for a zigzag stitch with the width of 3.5 millimeters and 1.5 length. And about 5 eighths inch in from the edge, you're going to do a little zigzag stitch all the way around the outside. When you're finished stitching, go ahead and clip your thread tails and now it's time to remove the excess yarns from the outside of that zigzag stitch. It's pretty easy, you're just going to grab those yarns from the, the woven part of the burlap and just very gently pull it outwards, which is going to give your little bunny applique runner kind of a shabby chic look. Now if you run into places where the yarn that you want to have removed is getting stuck in the seam, just get those scissors and gently cut it out. Just make sure that you don't cut your stitching. And do it on all four sides. And now your bunny applique runner is finished. Like I said earlier, you could take this technique and turn it into placemats or a really long table runner, a table topper. It's really entirely up to you. There's so many things you can do with this technique now that you know it. Well, sewing bees, I really hope you enjoyed today's tutorial and I can't wait to see what you do with these little Easter projects. Be sure to post pictures of your finished project and tag me everywhere at Suki Sews. 
And until I see you next time, I hope you have a creative day. Bye-bye.